Hello there, you mesmerising beauty, and welcome to another colon crunch on the exciting episode of Techspert Weekly. And I myself am so excited I'm having to wear several pairs of pants at once, because next week in Berlin, one of the biggest tech expos of the year is kicking right off. And I'm banging on about IFA 2022, where the IFA bit stands for... Uh, I don't actually know. Something in German, presumably. Hang on a minute. For... Not independent financial advisor, not iron folic acid. I don't know what any of this means. Okay, you know what, now it stands for I'm f***ing agitated and honestly, who even gives a toss? Whatever this thing actually is, your Uncle Spurt will be there with his big boy reporter pants on covering all of those big shiny launches in between lashings of vice beer and curry verse naturally. And all the while, I'll be trying my very best not to end up in yet another Berlin sex dungeon, but the less said about that unfortunate escapade, the better. But what shiny new tech can we actually expect to see out at IFA 2022? I maybe hear you mumble if you haven't already buggered off to Google Berlin sex dungeon. Well, I'm very glad you asked. Let's do a jingle and find out. Techspert Weekly! Now, one launch out in Berlin that every dedicated tech head should be keeping at least one eye on is Sony's Spafferific event, which kicks off on Thursday the 1st at 9am. Now, typically, this is the time of year when Sony unveils its Xperia 5 smartphone, so I'm really hoping that I'll get my Curryverse-stained hands on the Xperia 5 Mark IV, a dinkier and less horrifically expensive version of its Xperia 1 Mark IV flagship. GSM Marina recently spotted an FCC listing for what appears to be the new Xperia 5, featuring a slightly smaller than usual 6.04 inch screen. This should be a notchless OLED panel as usual, serving up Full HD plus visuals, complete with 120Hz refresh rate. Now the Xperia 5s typically sport more or less the same specs as the Xperia 1, just a few little differences such as the Full HD resolution panel rather than a full-on 4K effort, so hopefully the performance should be provided by at the very least a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 on the Xperia 5 Mark IV, although here's hoping that Sony hasn't been tied and has actually upgraded that to the fresh new 8 Plus Gen 1 which is more energy efficient. And you should once again have a triple lens camera slapped there on the back end, including the new true optical zoom lens introduced on the Xperia 1 Mark IV plus all of the usual clever clogs features ported from Sony's own Alpha cameras. Of course, because the Xperia 5 Mark IV is smaller than the flagship phone, you can expect a smaller battery as well, most likely a 4,500 mAh capacity cell like last year's model. And of course, you can expect all the usual Sony goodies chucked on there as well, including an actual headphone jack, stereo speakers, expandable storage, and some proper gaming tools. They just give you the edge over all those bloody school kids still on their summer holidays. And one of the more interesting reveals from that FCC listing is that the Xperia 5 Mark IV should support wireless charging, something that was missing from previous generations. And great news for anyone who can't stand the sight of USB cables. Look at you, you think you're so bloody good. Well, who needs you now, eh? Not me. And another big name appearing at IFA 2022 is Nokia, with the promise of several new smartphones launching on Thursday the 1st at noon. For one, we're certainly well overdue a new Nokia X series smartphone because the Nokia X20 is over a year old at this point and in serious need of some updating. Rumours have been floating around about a Nokia X21 for months now, which is said to be powered by the same Snapdragon 695 chipset as the Motorola Moto G82. You can expect a 6.7 inch OLED screen with 120Hz refresh, a big old battery and a dual lens camera with 64MB primary sensor and 13MB ultra wide alternative. Not to mention manufacturer HMD Global's usual dedication to software support and using planet-friendly materials. So when you rock a Nokia phone in your pocket or purse, you can know that you are doing your bit to save the planet like the apocalypse isn't mere months away anyway, so what's the f***ing point? Like, have you even looked at the news recently? Jesus f***ing Christ. What is going on, people? What is going on? Gee, where's the f***ing whiskey? And sadly, that's probably the most premium new Nokia phone we're likely to see in 2022, as HMD has already said they're stepping away from proper Captain Big Cock flagship smartphones for the foreseeable. But you can bet your left butt cheek we'll also be seeing some more affordable C-Series and G-Series branded Nokia blowers out in Berlin, and possibly some snazzy new accessories like headphones as well. Way. And next up is Zeus is holding an event on Wednesday the 31st at 2pm local time, so you can expect some hot laptop action from that in. And the highlight will be this bendy notebook here, the Zenbook 17 Fold OLED, which was first flashed about at CES way back in January. 
You can use it as a standalone 17 inch screen or you can bend it into a kind of makeshift laptop and then fold it all up to shove it back in your bag. Frankly, it's so clever it makes Gary Kasparov look like a bit of a thicky. And hopefully Asus will actually reveal a release date for this bad boy as well as a price, uh, but spoiler alert, it's probably not going to be cheap. And as much as I really, really want one, chances are I'm going to go out to Berlin and just spend all of my savings on Lederhosen. Definitely Lederhosen, not Sex Dungeons. And Honor is also going to be out at IFA 2022, unveiling a variety of gadgety goodness on Friday the 2nd at 5pm local time, with the tagline, Embracing the Connected Future. This little preview here teases everything from laptops and tablets to phones and earbuds, although just this week Honor revealed that its Honor 70 smartphone will be hitting the UK imminently. And I've done you a proper full unboxing of that skinny wee bugger, so go cop a load of that, why don't you? So that's just some of the sh** that will hopefully be launching out in Berlin. I'm going to be out there, full frontal attack as usual, trying to get as much hands-on action with all of the shiny stuff. So yeah, so make sure you smash that subscribe button like it's James Corden's face. And of course, there's a chance that none of this stuff will launch out there and I'll just look like a complete dick. So no different from usual. But anywho, now it's time for the part of the show that's filled with even more raw sewage than Britain's rivers and coastal resorts. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Just going to uh, pull this a little bit closer. I think I, uh, I might be needing that one. Uh, so kicking us off this week is RMG1 who says, I'm not even bothering posting comments on these videos anymore. All I've gotten from them in the past is shit and I've had enough. Oh mate, it sounds like someone really badly needs cheering up. But don't be so glum, here's everyone's favourite crusty foot apparel, Mr. Wangsaw, come out of his jaw just to turn that frown upside down. God, Jesus f***ing Christ, why did you have to go and wake me? I was having a cracking dream that Jennifer Lawrence was using me as a washcloth. Now Mr. Wangsock, our good chum, RMG1, is feeling a bit down in the dump, so I thought we could maybe sing him a song or something to make him feel better. Sing him a song? Who do I look like? Mary f***ing Poppins? Here's a f***ing song, you f***ing goblin piece of Get f***ed, get f***ed, get f***ed, you f***ing you f***ing c***, f*** you, f***. Ah, oh, sorry RMG1, it looks like Mr. Wangsock is a bit of a cranky pants today too. It's time out for you, mister. You absolute c***! <laughs> sorry about that, kiddies, and RMG1, I hope you're feeling better soon. Uh, just remember that your Uncle Spurt thinks you're a cracking guy. Or girl, it's kind of hard to tell from your, your name and your avatar whether you're a man or a woman, but let's face it, if you're watching this channel, chances are you probably own a penis. Uh, next up, Anthony R says, I love your face. Uh, cheers, Anthony. Uh, that's lovely, mate. Um, I don't know what your face looks like, but I'm sure it's a cracker too. Uh, Daniel says, how are you not demonetized? I have no answer to that, Daniel. I really couldn't tell you, mate. I don't know the inner workings of YouTube at all, uh, but all I can say is it's a bloody good thing because I depend on this shower of sh to pay for my weekly booze shop. And if that YouTube money stopped rolling in, then frankly, you just have to put up with sober, grumpy Uncle Spurt every week and nobody wants to see that. Uh, Edward says, hey, Uncle Spurt, how many bottles of whiskey did you drink before making this video? Some number higher than zero, but less than 10. I can't really be any more precise than that. Remember, kiddies, drink responsibly. Uh, next up, uh, Mickey, or Mitchy, sorry, no idea how to pronounce that, probably completely balls it up, says, Uncle Spurt should do a Heisenberg cosplay. Well, I did actually used to do a regular segment on this show well back in the day uh, called Which Crap Celebrity Do I Look Like This Week? Uh, even had its own little jingle, which I believe went a little something like this. Which crap celebrity do I look like this week? But you know what? In the many, many weeks that that little segment ran, I don't think I ever got Heisenberg. That's one fictional slaphead I didn't actually get compared to. Uh, YBD Beats says, what's goody? I literally have no idea what that means. Zero f***ing clue. Uh, moving on, Stony P says, please review Wank Socks. Well, it's funny you should mention that, Stony P, because I was actually going to set up a new channel called Wangsock Spurt, and talking about demonetization, that, that thing's going to last about half a day. But when you're thinking wank socks, you want to be thinking cotton, because it's breathable, you see, so it's a clever choice. The old John Thomas doesn't get too moist. Whatever you do, avoid synthetics like polyester, because then you're running the risk of static buildup, and let's face it, nobody needs frazzled pubes. Hope that helps you there, Stony. 
Uh, next up, uh, Nikam says, Much love to you, man, from the USA. Sends in positive vibes for a speedy recovery. Oh yeah, I completely forgot the last episode of Textbook Weekly I did. I was sick as a dog. Um, but yeah, thank you for your positive vibes, man. Good news is I, uh, I drank my way through it, so I was absolutely fine. And fun little fact for you, even though I tested negative for COVID the first couple of days uh, when I was sick, I then tested positive the final three days uh, when I was actually feeling absolutely fine. Again, I'd completely recovered. It was just—it just felt like a shit goal this time. Uh, so that's you know good news that the tests don't seem as reliable as they used to. But then at this point, it's pretty much full-on herd mentality anyway. I don't know anyone who hasn't had it in the last couple of weeks. Oh, uh, next up, Serrano says I've been super down on my luck for a few months, and you wouldn't believe it, but this channel kept me motivated all the time since I'm a huge tech fan. Thank you for this channel. A well, massive thanks for uh, sharing that, buddy. Uh, God, I could help. Just glad that this shower sh is actually doing some good apparently and hope your luck turns around soon if not already uh riven says you're british it's in our blood to complain damn bloody right it is about absolutely anything and everything even stuff that we can't change and especially stuff that's our own bloody fault uh or great mate oil is back again from uh yield japan he says i just realized that if i combine all the time i watch this show it would be about 20 plus hours of my life even though I haven't watched every single episode. Time well spent indeed. That is undoubtedly scary, man. And on the same token, the amount of time that I've spent shooting and editing this sack of wank juice, I could have gone out and found myself a proper job. Uh, TJ says, I come for the news, I stay for the Apple hate. And speaking of which, the next diarrhea tidal wave is a mere fortnight away, because Apple confirmed that it's like September the 7th or something is the, uh, the Apple iPhone 14 launch. So. Stay tuned for hot coverage on all that non-news. And next up, Ewan says, Hey Uncle Spurt, you replied to my driving test comment about a month ago. Oh yes, I remember it well, even though my brain is completely frazzled. Uh, happy to see I passed second time. Way congratulations, Ewan. I will drink to that, mate. You beat me because it took me three attempts to pass my driving test. I believe it was. It was well back in the day now. Uh, Info Orange says, Re books giving you dreams. I read Michelle Paver's Dark Matter late one night and had visions of the telegraph pole outside my house moving closer. You have to read the book to get the reference. Yeah, that's about the dude who's like stuck in an Arctic research base and going a bit mental, right? I definitely read that. I remember the pole stuff, which was really weird. Um, in fact, that was one of the last paperbacks I ever bought uh, and one of the last books I read before having a kid and therefore one of the last books I ever read or at least one of the last books that I read that wasn't directly related to not having a breakdown after having kids. Uh, Gem says, when's the audiobook versions of your novels coming out? Well, I did actually look into uh, services that turn your books into audiobooks, but even the cheapest ones were like at least a couple of grand and let's face it, that buys a lot of whiskey. And then I briefly considered just recording the audiobook versions myself, but then I'd have to do the voice of every single character, which basically means they'd all sound like pissed up northern reprobates. And well, we are well out of time. So last couple of comments, super, super quick. Uh, so Anthony says, you're my favorite baby. I don't know how to respond to that. Um, thanks, I guess. And then Kyron says, here's some advice for your caffeine addiction. Put a teaspoon of MCT oil in each cup of coffee. You'll need less caffeine to keep your brain awake. No more than one teaspoon every two hours though, otherwise you'll end up making an emergency trip to the toilet. What's MCT oil? Is that like castor oil or something? I'll have to look that shiz up, another trip to Boots and all that. But thanks uh, for that, this is great to see you guys are so smart, man. Every single week, smashing out the, the top advice. Knew I set up this channel for a reason. And uh, anyway, yeah, a massive thanks to everyone who's commented. Uh, not this week, last week, week before, whenever you did that, it was great. Sorry, I apparently can't even do sentences anymore. It's that time of the day already. Uh, but yeah, please do do your, your comments down below and we'll get through as many of those as possible in the next episode, which sadly won't be next week because I will be in Berlin doing all of that hands-on EFA shenanigans I was banging on about at the start of the episodes. But if I get the chance, I will try and smash out some sort of quick video out in Berlin, uh, see how I'm doing for time and all the rest of it, how much time obviously I spend in the beer halls and the sex dungeons. And even though you already kind of know what's going on next week, let's do the what's happening next week thing. This is about next week. So hey, guess what? Next Wednesday through Friday, there's a whole bunch of IFA launches going on out in Berlin. So lots of shiny new tech. I'll be hopefully covering 
a good chunk of that for you fine folk at home. Also next week, Oppo is launching its Reno 8 series of smartphones across Europe and here in Blighty. That's going to be a big Paris launch, so unfortunately I can't be attending that because only one Uncle Spurt. But I am still hoping to bring you coverage of the Reno 8, so uh, stay tuned for that. That's happening on Thursday the 1st, I believe. And I think that's it. I hope that's bloody it anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, so definitely stay tuned for all that hot content coming at your face next week. If you happen to live in Berlin and you pass me lying face down in my own bodily fluids sometime between Wednesday and Friday next week, then please just pick me up and shove me in a taxi or something. Have yourselves a wonderful bloody weekend, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, everyone. Love you.